Hey YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to get your mixes ready for mastering, whether it be the default two track mastering session or a stem mastering session. I'm going to show you how to do each and what you have to look out for while you're mixing in order to get a really good master file. So with that said, let's get straight to it. There are two things that you want to make sure when you are mixing so that you have a good master file. Number one is organization. Make sure all your tracks are labeled accordingly. This way when you're mixing, you know where everything is. I think that is a must with anything. Organization is always key. And number two is the main point that I want to cover here in this video is that when you are mixing, always make sure you are checking the peak meter on your master output and make sure that is not passing minus six dBs. So we're going to go ahead and play out this session right here and we're going to see where I'm peaking at and then how we can and what we can do to fix that to bring it down to minus 60 dBs without spending hours and hours of work remixing the track. So here it is right here. So when you're checking for this peak level, you want to make sure the loudest point of your track is not passing that minus 60 dBs. Uh, peak. So here it is right here, our loudest point. Now this level meter comes bundled with logic, you can load that in. And uh, it's saying that we are peaking at 4 dBs. So that's way too loud. If we were to send this over to a mastering engineer, he'd take that track, he or she, and probably not wouldn't be able to do much with it. It'll probably be distorted. The dynamic range won't be there. Just nothing would sound good at the master level because your mix wasn't good. It was mixed too high. So always make sure that you're mixing at a low point. Now, since this track is already mixed, we got to lower all the volumes down. Here's how you do that. Now, keep in mind, this only works if there is no volume automation on the tracks. We're going to go ahead and hit X on our keyboard to bring up our mixer window over here. We're going to select all of our tracks. That will lower all of our tracks at a relative volume. So if I go ahead and lower this, it's going to all be lowered at a relative rate. So let's go ahead and click play, open up our level meter, and make sure we're hitting minus 6 dBs. All right, so right there, we're pretty good. We're not peaking too loud. We're actually peaking a little bit lower than minus 60 dBs, as you can see right here. The lower is better, that's okay. It just leaves more room for the mastering engineer to work with your track, get more compression, make it as loud as possible, yet still keep that dynamic range that you set perfectly in your mix. Now, hopefully you don't have to do what I just did right here to get your, lift, your mix down to appropriate level. As you're mixing, you'll be mixing into that max range and you'll already be ready to go to export your track when you're all done mixing. Now that you are done with that, you're ready to go ahead and export your track. Next, what you want to do right here is make sure that you are selecting the entire track range or cycle range of your track. Do the entire recording. Then you're going to want to go to bounce and you're going to want to select PCM. You want to have the highest quality uh, audio file for your mastering engineer. So select PCM. The file format will be set to wave. I like to set my resolution to 24 bit and my sample rate to 48. The file type will be set to interleaved unless you want the left and right channel split. But in most cases, that's okay like that. Did the ring you want to leave to the mastering engineer? You don't need to do that at this point. Uh, you're going to want your normalize set to off. You don't want to set to on because it's going to bring your entire mix up to zero dBs. Make sure that is set to off. And I do like to include an audio tail. Let's say there's some reverb at the end of the track. You don't want to click or pop. So just include that audio tail and then click OK. Put where you want to save it and click Bounce. The next method I'm going to show you is stem mastering. Some mastering engineers allows you to send in stems, which gives them greater control on your master file because they have little clips of the individual sections. Now, if you want to get fancy before we get into this, you can. We're going to do and get fancy right now. We're going to sort of group all of our like tracks together. So our drums consists of these tracks right here. And we're going to create a new track stack. 
and we're gonna sum it to a folder. And we're gonna call this drums, as that's stem one of our track, the drum section. Uh, normally you'd have more tracks probably in your session, but in this case, we just have the recorder for our melody and synth patterns. We have our bass sound over here that is pretty much encompasses our entire bass section in this track. And we got our chords and that's how I would usually separate our stems. And of course a vocal stem if I had it as well. Next, what you want to do here is your cycle range will stay the same. Just solo out that track, click bounce, have all the same settings that we just put in and then click okay and export that and export them one by one. So I go ahead and export the chords. Then I go ahead and solo out the bass in 808. I'd bounce that, go from there. I'd bounce out our synth track or our synth uh, stem. I'm gonna go ahead and bounce that. And then I'll go ahead and bounce out our drum session or drum tracks and bounce that individually. So that's how you get grouped stems for your mastering engineer quickly and easily in Logic. The best way to do it and the easiest way, the cleanest way is just to set a quick track stack of all your tracks and you can just solo out the main folder and you got all that into that one stem. Now, the third way, if the mastering engineer wants all the individual tracks, you can do that as well. It's gonna go ahead and delete this track stack. Uh, all you have to do is uh, go to File, Export, go to All Tracks as Audio Files. Now that will give you every individual track, so the chords, the bass, the, everything will be individualized and they'll have individual stems. Uh, you want your range to be the cycle range that we have set to here. We want our wave format to be, or sorry, our file format to be wave, our bit depth to be 24 bit as usual. Uh, we are going to set normalize to off once again. We don't want our mix affected in any way. And you can sort of drag elements into the file name, whatever you like. I usually just use track name over here. Then you go ahead and click export. And then we'll go ahead and export that for you. And that's it. That's all you really need to know of getting your session ready for a mastering engineer. So those are some points and tips to get your session ready for the mastering stage. If you do have any questions on this, you can ask me in the comment section below. And if you are new to I'm a Music Mogul, remember a thumbs up, share it, and of course, hit that subscribe button for more good videos like this one. I'll talk to y'all soon. Later. Peace.